welcome to a new episode of Nate's MMA Corner. I'm Nate the Great. Didn't take that one from Nate Marquardt. I, I used that long before I knew who he was. <laughs> okay, so today's episode is a post-fight recap of the Ultimate Fighter 17 finale. Wow, what a event. This event is pay-per-view caliber, caliber. It was live from the Mandalay Bay Event Center, which a lot of major UFC pay-per-views usually take place at that one. Yeah, the main event was Arya Faber, Scott Jorgensen. This was a fight to the finish. It was a close one on the first three rounds. Like I, I called it, too. Scott Jorgensen was just... That under Raya Faber, Raya Faber was just that much better each and every time. The wrestling was pretty neutral. Jiu-Jitsu, Jiu though, was Raya Faber having that little edge, being a brown belt versus going up against a purple belt and Scott Jorgensen. And, yep, it went to fourth round, rear naked choke. Great job, Raya Faber. Yeah, we could give Uriah Faber a title shot now. I'm thinking maybe give him a number one contenders match, let him beat up another uh, top ten guy. If that goes well, then we know he's ready for Dominic Cruz part three or Hen and Burrell part two. Yeah, it'd be really great to make sure that he's good to go for that rather than try to rush the title fight. Uriah Hall, Kelvin uh, Gastelum, which was a middleweight bout. Oh yeah, in the main event with Rye Faber and Scott Jorgensen was a bantamweight bout. Rye Hall, uh, Kelvin Gastelum, that was a middleweight bout. That was for the finale. The winner who gets the six-figure contract of the Ultimate Fighter 17. Kelvin uses wrestling to put pressure on, like a lot of people thought. I don't think at all Rye Hall had octagon jitters or anything. He just got overwhelmed by Kelvin's wrestling. Kelvin did a great job putting pressure on him, stopping those power shots from Raya Hall. Raya Hall is an excellent striker, you know, great leg kicks, great roundhouse kicks, great jabs. But if you put pressure on him, if you're a wrestler, it takes away from that power, and it can be a long night for a great striker like Raya Hall. And unfortunately it was. I was rooting for Raya Hall. I still think Raya Hall has potential. He's not that old. He's in his late 20s. We'll see where he goes from here. I think he still has a future. Kelvin obviously has a future. He won the six-figure contract by a split decision. Hard-fought fight, though. Raya Hall's ground game is still not that bad. Just beef up on it a little bit. And he'll be fine. Yeah, Kelvin is the youngest Ultimate Fighter winner in history, being just 21 years old. Great job, Kelvin. Both guys from Team Sonnen. Glad to see Team Sonnen won the Ultimate Fighter. Then we go on to the women's bantamweight division. Misha Tate, Katzengano. Misha Tate, I thought would take this due to her experience and her wrestling and just having great striking. Katzengano was undefeated, though. She did beat up a lot of nobodies before this, or I shouldn't say nobodies, but lesser-known fighters. So this was a big test for her. She, Yeah, a lot of people say she had octagon jitters maybe in that first round, but then she found her groove in the second and third round. Finished Misha Tate in the third round by TKO knees. Knees and elbows. That was a brutal finish. Misha Tate was really out of it out of a chi fell on the ground, practically bloody, battered, beaten. I like them both, so it was hard to see one of them lose. Katzengano has a chance at, now, now Katzengano gets a title shot against Ronda Rousey. I think she has a chance at beating her if she can avoid the ground game, obviously, of Ronda Rousey. I'm, I, I actually think Katzengano could be the first opponent of Ronda Rousey to go to round two. And I think she'll also be a good coach in the Ultimate Fighter House because the winner of 
this Misha Tate Cats and Gyno fight got a coaching spot opposite Ronda Rousey in Ultimate Fighter Season 18. It's going to be a great show. They're going to be coaching men's bantamweight and women's bantamweights in the house. It's going to be great. A lot of people are saying it's going to be like the real world. I think it's going to be better than the real world. The real world has really gone downhill. And Ultimate Fighter has typically delivered. Then we uh, go on to the heavyweight bout. Travis Brown, Gabriel Gonzaga. What did I tell you? What did I tell you? Travis Brown would stuff a takedown, keep a distance, land some strikes, and sure enough, Gabriel Gonzaga in that first round tried to get a takedown. Travis Brown was up against the cage. He held up his takedown defense, which I told you guys he had. I told you so. Told you so. Travis Brown got, yeah, some vicious elbows to the head of Gabriel Gonzaga. Knocked him out in 1 minute 11 seconds. Good job, Travis Brown. Hope to see you again sometime soon. You're an awesome guy. It was cool meeting you in Vegas during UFC 146. And hope you get a top contender in your next match. You're now, I believe, four, yeah, 14 1 and 1 right now. So you bounce right back from that loss to Antonio Silva. Good job. Then we have Boba McDaniel versus Gilbert Smith in the middleweight division. Both of these guys were on the Ultimate Fighter Season 17 as well as contestants. They did a good job. It was a great fight. Yeah, Bubba McDaniel won by submission, triangle choke in round three. Bubba McDaniel, yeah, he, he really delivered. He really, it was, it was a hard fought fight. Bubba McDaniel really did a good job transitioning in the jiu-jitsu game. Yeah, he, it was like a try, yeah, he got a triangle choke and really got that arm sunk in. And it, it just, it was about ready to snap, and Gilbert Smith had to t tap out. Good job, Gil uh, Bubba McDaniel from the bottom. That was just awesome. Awesome submission. And while that wraps up the main card of Ultimate Fighter 17 finale, and the next show will be a pre fight show for UFC on Fox Gilbert Melendez versus Ben Henderson for the lightweight. UFC title. That will be a great fight. I think that will be probably the toughest fight of Ben Henderson's career. I think Ben Henderson can nudge out a victory, but it's going to be a tough one. I followed Gilbert Melendez throughout his strike force career. Great fights against Josh Thompson, who's also fighting on the main card. So stay tuned in the next few days or a week or so. Hope to have a pre-fight show for that. That fight's this Saturday and I'll also do a post-fight show. But next up will be the pre-fight show. So stay tuned for the pre-fight show to UFC on Fox. Melendez versus Henderson. Till then, see you later.